Now, amid the pressures of this uh, latest Omicron wave on the economy right now, the peak body in science and technology is making a case to double down on our investments in science. They say science has shielded the nation's economy over the past two years from deeper economic challenges, and without it, we would have been lost. Joining me now is Misha Schubert. She's CEO at Science and Technology Australia. Misha, thanks very much for your time. Your pre-budget submission, the key point of it basically is we need to fund the, the breakthroughs so that they are then applied here. Can you explain that to our viewers? Absolutely. So if we think about the last two years of our lived experience, it's been really clear how important science is, not just to our health and safety, our ability to stay alive and to avoid uh, a virus kind of being uh, infecting many more Australians. Through all of that deep science capability, everything from vaccines to testing regimes to masks, epidemiology, uh, medical diagnostics, you name it, that standing science capability has been core to Australia's ability to navigate this pandemic. And so our argument really is let's think about that. Let's uh, you know, use that insight to think about how we plan for the next bit of capability. So this budget coming up in March is the ideal time for us to put, budget, to put science at the centre to really double down on those strategic investments in science. Uh, one of the things that we've sort of called out is the fact that because Australia is geographically isolated because of the size of our economy, uh, we're not quite as good as some other nations at taking great science and engineering and technological breakthroughs and turning them into fully engineered products and services that can then start a startup company, be a source of jobs. So why is that? Revenue. Explain to us why yeah. that. It's that's commercialisation it is. side of things yeah. because we're, we're great on the... The, the, breakthrough. the breakthrough and Absolutely. the research, but not so much in the commercialising. Yes, is it that distance? Is that the problem? It's part of that. It's about the um, the lack of private sector investor capital at scale. When you compare us to say what happens in the US or Germany or many of the other powerhouse Israel, even uh, many of the other powerhouse research and development nations, they have a lot more private sector capital, but their governments also invest at a much greater scale. Australia at the moment, our uh, national investment is about 1.8 percent of our the size of our economy is the amount we put into R&D every year. You look at around the um, advanced nations of the world across the OECD, they're investing 2.4% of their economies on average. So we are underdone for that investment. If we develop some strategic investments through this budget in what we call a research translation fund, uh, that would be the vehicle through which we could take those brilliant, really promising science breakthroughs, have people work things up to the next stage of development to the point where the venture capital market will lean in. Do we have any fund or facility similar to this yeah. now that can be built upon or does it need to be established of its own right? Yeah. There are parts of the architecture, of course, uh, where we've got grants that are provide, provided for sort of what they call discovery or blue sky research, where you're not quite sure what you're looking for as a scientist, but you're looking at the properties or uh, how a particular gene works or how a bit of tech might work. Um, and then there's, of course, the Medical Research Future Fund, which works a little bit at that translational end to try and help do things like clinical trials. But in terms of the overall scale of what we invest now, we, we should be doing significantly more with that strategic investing. So we've called for this to be a new fund that would really drive science and technology innovations. We think if they uh, invested, if the government invested $2.4 billion over the four-year period of the budget, that would be of sufficient scale to really start to shift the dial on our research commercialisation. And are you thinking, Misha, that it's areas like, uh, you know, given the pandemic, that mm. antiviral treatments is, is a key area, yep. a key area that we need to have further breakthroughs and is that where the, the fund should be focusing its attention? Yep. There's huge scope for Australia to become a, a global player in antiviral um, uh, treatments. Uh, mRNA vaccine technology, so the vaccine technology that underpins the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, which has been a game changer around the world, uh, that capability is obviously moves afoot now to stand up a manufacturing capability for um, the Moderna vaccine in Victoria. Um, those, that technology, the same technology that makes those vaccines for, um, uh, for COVID, um, there's strong prospect that that could be used for cancer vaccines into the future if we yeah, can right. crack that capability. Australia could become a major global exporter of cancer vaccines if we can un 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 unlock that achievement. Wow. So huge potential like that. And then you think about the other big challenges that are going to come at us really hard and fast in the next couple of years. The dramatically changing climate, we know it's happening. The scientists are really clear about the changing nature of the climate and the scale of which that's happening. 
you know, we've got to move quickly to protect our farming sectors, our agriculture sectors, and that means science and technology need to be in there, uh, working out how we provide drought-ready drought, drought ready crops and help with water management. Um, and then antibiotic resistance is the other big one. So the point at which antibiotics stop being able to stop life-threatening uh, illnesses and infections in the body, that's obviously really serious and scary for human health. It also threatens Australia's agricultural industry once again. So we need science to be deeply invested in solving all of those big complex challenges for our country to keep us safe. And you know, it also I, is that sovereign cap capacity that yeah. we've been talking about with supply chain issues yeah. and all sorts of things throughout the last couple of years. Yeah. What you're talking about helps bolster that it that domestic sovereign capability. It absolutely does. It strengthens our supply chains. It avoids the things like the ad blue crisis that we saw where, you know, almost every truck in the country was, you know, a month shy of not being able to run because you can't actually, you know, unless you've got that ad blue supply, your truck won't actually turn on and, and be able to drive. So all of those capabilities, you know, and our key thing is, you know, we really need to fund science like our lives and our economy depend on it because actually they do. Yes.